Hello and greetings from Marmot, West Virginia. Uh, it's uh, my privilege and honor to bring the word of God to you, uh, to you uh, beloved men and women in India. And I'm just uh, thankful and grateful for the opportunity. And it's my prayer today that the Holy Spirit will minister and to speak to your heart and help you to draw closer to Him. And uh, and it's uh, my prayer and desire that we'll uh, all decrease so that way he can increase in our lives and today i was wanting to talk to you a little bit about prayer and it seems like it's such a simple thing but so many people have hang-ups and it's not so much having the right words to say or be having perfect etiquette speech or anything along, along that lines prayer is communication with god it's an opportunity for you to talk to our father but also our father to talk to you and of course, uh, prayer and praise both are a weapon to, uh, against the enemy as well. Um, there is things that the Father can speak to your heart in those times of prayer uh, to help you uh, to combat uh, maybe possible attacks coming your way or to prepare you for uh, trials or uh also, just to encourage you, if you are going through a trial or a rough time, just to have uh, the Holy Spirit just to come and comfort you. And so that was one of the things, you know, I wanted to speak about today it is prayer. And uh, I was going into uh, Matthew chapter 6. And of course, there is a reference to the Lord's Prayer also in Luke chapter 11. So even though we're only talking about the Lord's Prayer today, I would encourage you to read the whole chapter of uh, Matthew 6 because it all kind of ties in together. Your prayer, but then uh, being having the disciplined life about, you know, your charitable deeds and uh, also uh, information about fasting, which is a form of prayer. And we might actually be able to even hit on that a little bit and then laying up treasures in heaven uh you know things that uh you know are important to you you know how you use your money how you use your time and talents and then of course you know the lamp of the body and you can't serve god and riches uh is there a problem with being rich no there's it's a problem when the money owe, owns you. You don't owe the money, but when the money owns you. And then, of course, worrying. Because uh, if you're walking in worry, you're not walking in faith. So it all kind of ties in together. So, uh, I'm, you know, it's my encouragement uh, for you guys to uh, take time and read all of chapter 6, even after we're done today. And we'll go ahead and pray, and we will get opened up. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we just thank you and praise you, and we just magnify you and just exalt you, because you are the King of kings, and you are the Lord of lords, and Father, I thank you and praise you that we can come to you boldly before your throne, and Father, we can make our petitions known to you, Father. I thank you and praise you that you're always listening, and you're omnipotent, and you're there whether we need you two o'clock in the morning, or you're even there when we can't even speak, and all we could do is maybe just just cry. Father, we just thank you and praise you that you're always there for each and every one of us, no matter where we're at, whether we're in the United States or we're in India. Father, we just thank you and just praise you for that. And I just pray that you'll just magnify your word. And Father God, that you'll just teach us your word and help us to be a doer of your word and not a hearer of it only. Father, I just pray that you'll just lead and guide and just direct what I teach today. And Holy Spirit, I just pray that uh, you just illuminate uh, the Father's word to us, Father, because uh, you are the true uh, teacher. And I just pray that we'll just open our hearts and open our minds and we'll just receive from you today. And Father, we just want to thank you and praise you and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, and we'll get started in Matthew 6. I'm going to get it pulled back up. It just kind of went blank on me there, so I apologize. And um, today's been a good day. Uh, we're celebrating Independence Day here in America, so it's a holiday for us. Uh, that's when we uh, separated ourselves from England and declared ourselves as a nation unto itself. And today my husband's uh, grandfather celebrated his 89th birthday. So uh, we've been to his birthday party today. So it's been a pretty good day so far. 
I meant to send this a little earlier today, but uh, but kind of life got in the way a little bit. And so we're going to start in chapter Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. And it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. It's okay to be able to stand up and pray in church and all that kind of stuff. What they're talking about here is the attitude. You're just standing up and praying so people can see you. And that way people say, oh, look how spiritual such and such is. They just get up and they just give these wonderful, beautiful prayers. No, that's not the attitude. Uh, so it's not about praying in public. I mean, that's not what they're talking about. It's talking about when you're just standing because you just want to be seen. And there's a difference here. And then, and then we'll pick up there and it says, Surely I say unto you, they have their reward. Uh, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And that's true. You know, whenever you go pray things in private, you know, you don't have to, uh, share everything, you know, to other people. Uh, but just, you know, there's just some things you should just pray to yourself and put it in the Father's hands and, and let the Father take care of it because He will reward you openly when He answers those prayers for you. And when you pray, do not use vain repeti repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. And in this manner, therefore, this is the way that you pray. And it's okay to pray it just like this, but this is a model prayer. So uh, we're going to talk about some key points of when you do pray, uh, how you should pray. And so we're going to pick it up there in 9 and it says, and you probably most of you guys are very familiar with this. And early on in my Christian walk, someone had taught me about the Lord's Prayer. And it changed my prayer life forever. And I, I'm thankful and, uh, and appreciate that. And it says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And there's some key points. You know, first off, we, we do pray to our Father God in Jesus' name. And whenever we do pray, uh, you know, give him reverence. Give him respect. Acknowledge Him as your Father. Give Him your worship and give Him your praise. Uh, that's one thing I've always said to people. You know, I can go to God in prayer anytime I want, but the Word says that He inhabits the praises of His people. Whenever I come to go talk to the Father, sometimes I will spend some time in praise and worship, maybe listen to some music, uh, you know, etc., and just spend some time praising Him. I can go to God anytime I want to in prayer, but when I praise Him, He comes to me. And that sometimes that can make a big difference when you're praying. You know, God always hears you. So even when you think your prayers aren't going past the ceiling, He still hears you. But but it's something sweet about spending that time in prayer when you have been in praise and worship and you're already in the presence of God. And you know God is already in the room. It just makes it so much easier to pour your heart out to Him. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit is present. And, you know, and He will lead in God and He'll just direct you. There's nothing better than praying God's perfect will. You know, sometimes it ain't always about our wants. You know, uh, sometimes the Father knows well, not sometimes. He always knows better what we need than what we even know ourselves. So give him that reverence. Uh, you know, give him that praise. Give him that worship. You know, uh, you know, humble yourself before him. You know, hallowed be thy name. And it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
you know, acknowledge, you know, God's way of doing things. Uh, the perfect prayer is praying God's word over yourself. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. You know, you're not going to be able to pray to God and ask him for to do things in your life that's going to be contradictory to his word. It just ain't going to happen. You know, uh, and of course, nobody, <laughs> of course, would ever want this. But just to kind of use it as an example, uh, you know, asking God to help you rob a bank. No, God is not going to help you to do that. So uh, your kingdom come, your will be done. You know, so uh, be about the kingdom's business. And as for, you know, as for God for things that you would like in your life that you know clearly line, will line up with his word or if he clearly has spoken it to you. Uh, don't ask him and pray for, you know, that spouse that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. No, because the Bible tells you he don't want you e unequally yoked. Uh, so, yeah, so don't be praying for, you know, that uh, person that don't belong to God. Oh, you know, my love will change him and they'll go to church and, you know, uh, here in America, that seems like that's one of the biggest things that plagues uh, single Christians. Uh, you know, uh, they're, you know, oh, they'll, you know, they, they do missionary dating. That's the word I was looking for. Oh, if they date this person, they can bring them to Jesus Christ. And I know that was a side bunny trail, and I apologize for that. But for some reason, I felt led to say that. You know, you don't have no business dating anybody that's not a born-again believer, period. And it says, give us this day our daily bread. God does want to provide for your daily needs, you know, your spiritual needs, your physical needs, and he knows that you need these things. And then it's okay to ask him, give me strength for today, or I need this. And this part is very important in verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let me say that again. And forgive our, give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. God is going to forgive you in the same measure that you forgive others. You uh, want your prayers left unanswered? Harbor unforgiveness in your hearts. That will cut off your fellowship with the Father right now. You know, who are we if... Jesus Christ died on the cross for everybody's sins, and he's willing to forgive anyone who asks, who are we not to? You know, n no, that, that unforgiveness should not be in a Christian's life. And if it is, ask the Father to help you with that. Put that on the altar and, and help him, you know, ask him to help change your heart toward that individual or whatever that situation was, you know, because unforgiveness will kill you like a cancer. And a lot of people don't know, but when they harbor unforgiveness, especially during an individual, they're so angry with that person that they end up making that person an idol because they would put that person before God or anything else just to be able to stay mad at him. And that, that's not right either. So forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And that's one thing, you know, check your heart. Make sure you're not harboring any unforgiveness. You know what? Most people that you can be mad at, they don't even know that you're even mad at them or they don't even know they even hurt you. And here you're harboring all this and carrying this stuff around and they don't even know it. Uh, you know, so let that stuff go. And if you need to go talk to somebody, I absolutely go talk to that person and say, hey, this offended me, this upset me, da, 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 you know, uh, and, and forgive that person, pray with that person, love on that person. Jesus Christ forgave you, now you need to forgive others. Uh, and it's even in the word that, hey, we're to give, uh, forgive 70 times, seven times 70 a day, 70 times seven a day. So, and basically that's an infinite number. Uh, basically uh, what was being, uh, you know, taught to the disciples. You know, forgive. Always be quick to forgive. And it says, do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You know, and, and it's okay. Hey, God you know, Father, 
uh, lead and guide and direct my footsteps. Be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Show me the right way. Keep me away from temptation. Uh, you know, show, show me the path that you want me to take. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, or if you know you're struggling with something, God, help me with this area of my life that I'm struggling with and I fall. Help me with that. You know what? That's absolutely okay to pray about. That's one thing, though. We can be totally honest with the Father. I, I don't care what you've been through, where you've been, what you struggled with. There is nothing so bad you've ever done that you're going to shock him off of his throne. You know, I mean, he knows all about these things even before he even created you. And... He's faithful and just uh, to complete the good work that he started in you. But we also got to do our part. Uh, and sometimes that means, you know, getting down on our knees and asking him to help us. Uh, and, help, and, and, help, and asking him to help us to crucify that part of our flesh, whatever it is that we're struggling with. And it says, and of course, back, going back, it says, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, the same way that you open with uh, uh, with reverence and praise and thanksgiving and honoring the Father, that's the same way that you close. You know, because uh, he is the Alpha and Omega. You know, he is the beginning and the end. And, you know, like I said, there's no certain words that you have to say. But, you know, just to kind of hit those points. Give him the praise and the honor and the reverence that he deserves. You know, pray for God's will in your life. Ask him to, uh, to uh, provide for your daily needs. Ask him to forgive us as we forgive others. And ask him to not, le not let you be led in temptation, but to help you to walk the path of righteousness. And... You close it all out with that praise and that admiration again. And it says, and going back to, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. In 14, it picks it back up. It says, if you forgive men for their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And... The main thing is, like I said, whenever you harbor that unforgiveness, uh, you're cutting off fellowship with the Father. Uh, you know, that, you know, like I said, you end up making that thing an idol in your life because of all the anger, anger and the hostility that you may be holding. It ends up being a roadblock uh, from your fellowship with the Father, but also a, uh, you know, robot block to be able to hear him clearly and to let him talk to you and that and that's another thing when you pray you know sometimes just sit in some silence for a while for a while and see if the father speaks something to you that's very important uh prayer is a two-way you know two two form of communication you know, yes, the Father loves it when we talk to Him and pray. But you know what? The Father wants to talk to you too. And a lot of times He will speak to you through His Word. And then there's times He will just speak to your heart when you're praying. And give Him an opportunity to speak. You know, I always say when in, you know, pray as much as you humanly can. You know, even if you're in a hurry in the mornings or blah, 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 blah. But take that opportunity to let the Father be able to speak to you as well. Because that, that's very important. Uh, you know, uh, and, and prayer, you know, should not be like a five-minute ritual when you're done for the day. You know, uh, it, it's that constant communication. Uh, you know, and the more time you spend with Him, the easier it is to hear His voice. You know, just like people that you spend time with. Uh, you know, your spouse or parents or close friends, you can be anywhere and you can pick up their voice in a crowd because you know them that well. 
Well, that's the way your father should be too. Because these sheep hear his voice and they won't follow another one. The more time you spend with him, it was it's easier to s- decipher, is it uh, the voice of the father or is it the voice of the enemy? And knowing God's word will help you with that too. Because God will never contradict his word. That's one thing God cannot do. He cannot lie and he will not contradict his word. Uh, so, you know, you can always be rest assured about that. And just like when we was talking about, you know, in the beginning, you know, God is not going to help you accomplish things that's clearly against his will. And I used, you know, the obvious example of robbing a bank. Of course, none of us would ever do that. But, I mean, some maybe other subtle things, you know, that are clearly contradictory to his word, but we're thinking, oh, God, just, you know, just just one time and, you know, da-da-da-da. No, no, no. He's never going to contradict his word. And so he'll never answer that kind of prayer. And we we do have time to, to kind of get into the fasting. And fasting is also a form of prayer. And one of these times... uh. I might teach you about the different types of fasting that there is. Uh, And a fasting is just between you and God alone. And there's different types. Uh, Some people will just fast with just water. Or uh, they may fast just a meal. Um, They may may fast several days. Uh, Of course, we've seen that Jesus fasted for 40 days. And I've never done it, but I've known uh, people in my church before have done it. Uh, Some people will fast with things with just like uh, vegetables and water. Uh, You know, no matter how you fast, you know, obey the Father as He speaks to your heart. Uh, And it's it's not if you fast, it's when you fast. And, uh, And fasting is another form of type of prayer. And it can be, you know, used in spiritual warfare as well. Uh, when you're really needing to seek the Father's face and you really need to shut out the world, this is a, fasting is a good way of crucifying your flesh. Uh, so that way you can hear the Spirit. And in verse 16 it says, Moreover, when you fast, not if you fast, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men as fasting. It's like, Oh, I'm suffering for the Lord. And I want everybody to know it's like, oh, look at me. You know, I'm fasting and, you know, going without food and, you know, all of this. And, you know, look at me. I'm so holy. No, that that's not the attitude. You can still fast, go to work or do other things. But you don't go around telling people you're fasting. You know, uh, you know, you that's that's a private thing between you and the Father. And you don't go around, you know, looking like, like you're uh like you're fasting or anything. You know, clean yourself up and go about your daily routine, do all the normal things that you do, except the only difference is you're fasting. And fasting is just not skipping a meal. Whenever you skip that meal or food or if you're fasting with vegetables, however the Lord has led you to do it, you take that time when you were supposed to have your meal and you go actually go pray. Uh, you're praying instead of eating, basically, uh, to kind of uh, make it the simple, short, sweet version of it. In lieu of eating that meal or whatever, you're praying. And it says, uh, and the sh- yeah, uh, and 17 says, But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to men to be fasting, but your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Just like when we did in the prayer. And if you go up and read about uh, you know, your charitable deeds, everything that you've done in secretly, the Father will uh, reward you openly. And that's what we've been talking about today. And fasting is another form of prayer. And maybe hopefully one of these days I'll take you into the Old Testament and I'll show you, you know, the different types of fasts uh, that they use. Like, uh, I think there was even one with grain. 
they did like vegetables and water, or they completely abstained from food uh, and only did water, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, some people would fast for days. Maybe some be people might fast a meal or two. But the thing of it is, no matter how you fast, uh, you're doing it because the Father is leading you to do it. And you're not trying to be seen of men. And, you know, you don't want to look like, oh, I'm suffering so much and da-da-da. And look how holy I am and all that. And that's the same thing with your prayers, too. Like I said, it's nothing like wrong with standing up in a church service and offering up a prayer to begin praise and worship or what have you. It becomes a problem whenever you're standing up because you want people to see you and think, oh, look how spiritual I am. I am the super Christian. That's when it becomes a problem. And, you know, same thing with fasting stuff. You go all about your day. You know, everything looks normal to everybody all around you. And only you and the Father knows that you're fasting. And uh, and I hope that some of this kind of... Uh, you know, helped you out here today because uh, we're getting close to our 30-minute times. But, you know, the, but if I can reiterate in 5, it says, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street then they may be seen by men. As surely I say unto you, they have their reward. You know, don't do that. And and if we another thing that we want to hit hard again is about harboring unforgiveness. You want the Father to forgive you. And you know what? He freely died on the cross for you. And if you are harboring unforgiveness against somebody, guess what? Jesus also freely died on the cross for them as well. So always remember that. I, I don't care who you're mad at. And even with spouses, uh, you know, be quick to forgive your spouse. Uh, there's only one perfect one on this planet, and that's Jesus Christ, his own self. Uh, and the rest of us, well, we're all still a work in progress. And, and so be quick to forgive people. Uh, so I want to encourage you with that. And uh, I, hopefully this has been a blessing to you today. And maybe we'll get to hit on this some more. You know, I'll definitely pray about it because I want to bring you things that I think, you know, the Father is leading me me to bring to you and I hope these have been a blessing to you and they've encouraged you and I hope they're helping you grow and you know what and it goes a two-way street these are also helping me as well and uh you know even though I don't get to see you guys in person I'm always praying for you guys and I want you guys to be encouraged and uh, you guys are a blessing to me, and I hope I'm a blessing to you. And uh, hopefully, you know, we will uh, be able to get together soon and share some more word together. So uh, I just uh, praying for everybody, and I hope everybody will be blessed. And, and I'll go ahead and I'll close this out in prayer. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your word. And we thank you and praise you that you did give us a model prayer in your word that we can follow. And help us to, Father God, to be able to use these guidelines and to be able to bring you honor and to bring you glory. And to help us just to draw closer to you and have better communication with you. And help us to be able to cl more clearly hear your voice, Father. Father, I just pray that you'll just be with us and you'll just lead in God and you'll just direct us and help us when we pray and help us when we fast. And and just uh, and I just pray that you'll even uh, help us whenever we're out just being a witness to people that, Father God, we can share uh, our own personal testimonies of things that, Father God, you have accomplished and how you've answered uh, prayers in our lives, Father, to help people's faith grow and people's faith to increase, Father. Father, I just uh, lift up my brothers and sisters in India, and Father God, I thank you and praise you for each and every one of them because you have set them apart unto yourself, Father. And Father God, you've got a calling and a purpose on each one of their lives. And Father God, I thank you and praise you that uh, you're going to be faithful to complete that. Father, just lead in God, just direct them, provide them for all of their needs. And, and Father God, keep them well and keep them safe and keep them protected, Father. Father God, I, I just pray that... Uh, 
that you will provide for all their physical needs and, and for the new church that's coming up and, and for uh, the orphanages and all the other works in the ministry and, and maybe even more ministry work that's coming down the line that we just don't even know about it. But you already do. And, and Father, we lift those things up to you too. And Father, we just want to thank you and we just love you and we just praise you for all that you are to us. And you are a good God and you have given us such a great and wonderful salvation. And help us not to take it for granted, Father. And Father, we just want to just praise you and we just magnify you and we just exalt you. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys, and uh, I will see you guys uh, hopefully the next time. God bless. Bye-bye.